Welcome back, family. Happy Friday. I hope everybody is enjoying their Friday. So before we get started, I want to welcome back my OGs and I want to welcome my new subscribers. And if you come across this video today and you like what you see and you want to join the family, see it up here in the corner? Yep. Go ahead. Go on down there to the bottom and hit subscribe. Hey, join the family. You won't regret it. And while you're down there, make sure you like the video. Share the video if you like. And also, don't forget to turn on your notifications so you don't miss a thing. You don't want to miss a thing. Today is supposed to be Collaboration Thursday for me and the other beautiful ladies that are in the YouTubers Vloggers Boot Camp that we are joining, uh, started by Life of Steph Vlogs. Um, today is Collaboration Thursday, so we are supposed to be doing a collab on... Um, we're doing story time today. That's what we're doing. It's a story time today. Um... So I'm late, so you're getting this late, but it's okay, because as long as you get it, that's all that really matters, right? Okay, well, that's all that matters. So today you're going to get it. So today, what we're going to do is, I don't really have nothing educational or, you know, hilariously funny to tell you, but I do have a very interesting uh, video, I mean, a very interesting story to tell you that I thought was cute, and my husband liked to seem to tell the story too as well when we get around others. He just thinks the story is just like, I don't know, it's just crazy, but... We love to tell the story. He loves to tell the story, and I love to retell the story so I can tell it the correct way. Because, of course, he's going to tell it some other kind of way. But it's all good, though, it's all, and it's all in fun. Um, so my story is about the time I met Andre 3000 when I was living in Atlanta, and I was working uh, at the Martin Luther King National Historic Site. Okay, y'all, so look, before y'all think I fanned out, I did not. I didn't fan. I didn't fangirl out. I didn't do that. I just... It was, it was, it was what you call just one of those things that just really happened and we didn't expect it was going to happen, but it was so cool that it did happen. So this is how the story happened, right? Real interesting story. So I'm at work, right? And I worked, I didn't work for the park service, but the company that I worked for were partners with the park service, right? So I was working at, the, if you've ever been to Atlanta, you ever been to the Martin Luther King National Historic Site, there's a historic fire station there, right? So there was a fire station there that um, my bookstore was in that we ran there in, in that fire station. So one day he came into the fire station, right? Now, mind you, I didn't see him first. It was a, you know, schools come in and out all the time. You know, you get a bunch of schools, they're their own field trips and things of that nature. So there was a big field trip that came in that day. Um, and when they came in, I was doing, you know, just doing what I normally do. I was probably behind the, the desk doing some paperwork or something when they came in. Then of course I got up to greet them and things of that nature. And then, um, you know, of course, once they start purchasing things, it, you know, then I had to get behind the register and make sure that, you know, these purchases were made. So he came in the store with the uh, group of kids. Um, and um, if I'm not mistaken, um, his son was there on a field trip. Right. And he was there with his son. And so he was, you know, just milling around the store. So everybody, it was a buzz because, you know, some of me and some of the other workers that were there, you know, we noticed that he was there in the parking and we noticed that he was in the fire station. So it was just cool to see him there. You know, he was just being a regular old guy, you know, cool, you know, laid back, just chilling, enjoying the time with his son. And they were enjoying the trip with the school and everything. Um, but what was funny was, is that, you know, we had this policy that when you come to this, when you come to the cash register, you have to check ID. So when he came, when he came to go actually purchase something, I felt so weird. Like, can I see your ID? Like, why would I need to see your ID? There's no reason why I need to see your ID because I know, and everybody in this fire station almost know who you are. So there's no need for me to check your ID, but it feels so strange. Can I see your ID, sir? But anyway, so he came in, he, you know, they walked around the fire station. Like I said, they enjoyed the things there. They checked out things and he came in and came to the register and he made a purchase. When I say my heart, was pounding because I'm a fan of Andre 3000. My my husband, he is a huge fan of Andre 3000, and uh, and so is my son because he's sitting over here. How about hey, hey, hey. so he's a he's a fan of Andre 3000 as well, and so uh, so you know I'm just nervous. You know, you meet a celebrity, you know, you 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 don't want to fan out too much because you know you just like you want to keep you calm. You don't want them to think you crazy and that like that. But boy, I want to say, can you sign this? Can I take a picture? But no. I was there to do a job. He was there enjoying the time with his son, and that's what it was going to be. And I wasn't going to, you know, that wasn't going to happen. So after we did the, um, you know, the transaction or whatever, you know, he went on out, and the school went on out and everything. And, uh, you know, of course, other people came in, you know, and we was going on, you know, about our day. 
So by this time, by okay, I think I don't know. It wasn't too far off, but I know the the the, the fire station was extremely quiet now because there wasn't a whole bunch of people in the fire station anymore. Actually, it was nobody in the fire station anymore. It was just me. So I'm in there, you know, you know, when, when customers leave out, you got to go around, make sure you restock and make sure you fix everything and everything's looking nice and neat and clean, right? So I'm just in there and I think at this time, I'm trying to remember if I was already on the phone with Supreme or did I call Supreme after he came back, but I'm just, I'm just in there, right? I wish I could remember whether or not I was already on the phone with Supreme. I think I was, I don't think I was, but he came back into the fire station by himself. All by himself. He ain't had no security guards. He ain't had nobody with him. His son wasn't with him. It was just him by himself. And I'm sitting in fire station like now, see, somebody playing with me. Because they want me to act a fool up in this in this fire station. Because they know I like this man. I love this man. And why are they doing that? Why are they sitting him in this fire station with me by myself? What am I supposed to do? Now at this point, I, I mean, I, I really can't act a fool because it's just me and him in there. So he was so nice. He came back in. He was like, you know, I lost my phone. And I felt so bad. He said, I lost my phone. Did you, you know, did you find a phone? Did you pick up a phone? So, you know, I walked around, you know, I said, nobody returned a, um, a phone to me. Um, and I walk, I've been walking around the store and, you know, I haven't seen anything, you know, anything like that. So um, he said, but I, I said, I can, you know, help you look for it. So me and him just walking around. I get on the phone and I, I call Supreme. I'm like, Supreme, you ain't going to believe this. I, so, yeah, so apparently I must wasn't on the phone when he came in, so I must have called Supreme. Then I was like, you are not, my husband, I said, you are not going to believe who is in my store right now. And, I, and I'm like trying to whisper, because I know this man probably over there listening to me, because the story was so big. It's big enough for me to talk to Supreme, but I'm just like, he was like, nah, uh-uh. I said, what, Andre 3000 is in this store right now. Just me and him. He done lost his phone, and I'm trying to walk around this store trying to help him find this, find this phone. He was like, uh-uh, no, he not. I said, yes, he is. So... Like I said, I'm whispering him, but I got Supreme on the phone. I'm holding the phone to my head, right? I know this guy probably was like, what is she doing? But I'm holding the phone to my head, and I'm walking around the store. I'm looking behind stuff, looking under stuff. I even went into the bathrooms and, you know, to see if it was in the bathroom. Was anybody stashed in the bathroom? Whatever. I'm just looking everywhere, right? So at this point, we couldn't find anything. So I tell him, I said, well, you know, um, no, he says, well, if, if you come across the phone, if anybody come across the phone, I'm going to leave a contact number for you all to get in contact with me and, um, you know, so, so the phone could be returned. And I was like, okay, bet. So he gave the contact number and he went on and left out, you know, no problem. Um, and I didn't keep the, I didn't keep it since we was on the par park service grounds. I, I turned it over to the park service because I figured if anything, they'll be the first one to get it before I would probably, I don't know, um, if it was like found on the street or something like that. So. I gave them the number, you know, with the host that they were going to find the phone and then, you know, contact him, you know, if they find it. So days later, days later, days later, and me and another one of the park service workers were sitting in the store. We were talking. Um, my boy, Justin, if you see this video, hey, Justin, I ain't seen you in so long. But anyway, so we were sitting there. We was chit chat. We was talking. And um, I don't know where. And when I say out of nowhere, this man just morphed like pfft. And we sitting there looking like, looking at each other like, now this was days later, y'all. This was days later, okay? I don't know how many days later, but this was days, I don't know, it might have been a week later. I'm not even really sure how long ago, but it was long, It was well after the time that he came in and was looking for his phone. And so, uh, he come in the store and he just appeared at my register. Like, my desk is literally, it, the counter for the, it was the counter and the register was near, on the side of where my desk was. But it was up some, and my desk sat behind the counter. So I'm sitting there, and Justin sitting there, and you know I'm, I'm sure I'm busy with something, doing something. We just chatting, you know, you know, and because uh, they come in, you know, sometimes they come in before their tours and stuff like that, and they'll come in for a minute, and say hey or whatever or whatever. They gotta meet somebody there or whatever the case may be. So he was in there, so we just sitting there, and I mean, y'all, I cannot make this up. This man just showed up out of nowhere. I say this man got some special powers, cause why? Why are we sitting in here and we ain't hear that door open? We didn't hear no footsteps to my desk. We didn't hear any of that. Nothing that me and Justin was doing was going to make us look up and say, hey, somebody walked into this store. We didn't hear nothing. Okay. And so I'm sitting there like, hey, you know, like, you know, I'm just like, hey, how are you? We didn't hear you. We didn't hear you come in. We didn't see you. And when I say this is just one cool dude, like if you all have ever had a, a chance to meet Andre 3000, 
I don't know. Is he still going by Andre 3000 yeah, right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, if y'all ever had a chance to meet him and and he was cool in real life, he is really like that. Because, I mean, when I say my personal experience with him was like, this dude is cool. Like, to just be able to walk around in your hometown like that in this National Park site and just be chilling with your nice comfortable shoes on and your nice flowy pants and just enjoy life like as an entertainer, a superstar, somebody who's legendary. To me, like, that's awesome to be able to do that now. I don't know whether he can still do that now or not, but at the time, back then, he was doing it. And, you know, he 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 just walking around by himself. It wasn't nobody with him. He had no bunch of big security guards or bodyguards or nothing like that. It was just him by himself. And so, hold on, let me finish. And then, so, when he come, when he, when he, when he showed up at the counter, right, he says, he says, oh, well, you know, I, you know, he said, hey, and, you know, I, I, it was something that I wanted to purchase when I was here last, and I, I didn't get it, and I just wanted to know if y'all had it, you know, whatever, whatever. So we had this uh, set. Oh, I wish I could remember the set. It was, because everything in the store that we sold was, you know, pertaining to civil rights, anything that was pertaining to Dr. Martin Luther King, his family, uh, his birthplace, um, um, the whole grounds, um, you know, all anything in that time period uh, that was related to the civil rights movement and what Dr. King was doing in his birth home, um, that's what we sold in the store, you know, so we sold a lot of educational things. I mean, alongside some trinkets like magnets and keychains and stuff like that, but it was always going to be something related to, you know, what the site was about. And so we had this set, um, it was a DVD set at the time, and it was a black history set, um, you know, on different, I think it was on different time periods of the, of, of the civil rights movement. It was either the civil rights movement or black history, but anyway, it was, you know, it was, it was in that, in that realm, right? So he wanted to purchase that, and that thing was expensive. That was one of our most expensive items um, that we had because, like I said, it was a whole set, and he wanted to purchase it. He came back to the store to purchase, and I was like, well, did you ever find your phone? <laughs> you see, either I asked him or did he ask me that, he, that we find the phone. No, I asked him because I don't even think when he came back, he even asked or he even thought about the phone. He wanted to purchase this set. So I asked him, you know, had he ever, you know, found his phone, but unfortunately he had never found his phone before. But y'all, to meet this man or see this man three different times like that, well, one day and two times in one day and then some other random day, it was just, you know, amazing to me to be able to meet entertainers. Now, the thing is, I wasn't above meeting entertainers when I was in Atlanta. You always ran into an entertainer somewhere in Atlanta. But I have to say that he was definitely one of the coolest entertainers that I think I had a chance um, to meet. And then just the, how the circumstances was, it was, you know, even cooler, so... My hubby is sitting over here because he wanted to say something. What you want to say, hubby? No, no, I, I was going to say you, you had referred to him walking around now. He still walked around by himself now. He did a, uh, an interview, mm -hmm. like he was washing clothes or something. Mm -hmm. Just here on the, I forgot who interviewed him. But yeah, he just mm -hmm. did an interview. And they, they, they saw him walking around. Just walking around. In China, they started walking around in New York. Oh, then, okay. Uh, he put over that food or whatever he has. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what type of food he yeah. has, but he's playing the food or whatever. Mm -hmm. or and, um, yeah, he made it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know it, it was a joke at the mm -hmm. time. I was mm -hmm. saying that he was trying to talk to you or whatever. Mm -hmm. but Oh, yeah, he would say that he gave me the phone number because he was trying to holler me. I'm like, that man wasn't studying nothing I had going on. That man was looking for his phone. Andre was looking for you. He was looking for his phone. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. To me, it was just a joke because, again, we, I'm a, I'm an outcast fan. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm not a fan, man, but I really, I really love Andre and yeah. Big Boy, so, yeah. you know, our time being I here, met Big Boy, too. I met Big Boy, boy too. too. Yeah, so, I uh, met him, too. If they, if they watch this video, please, don't, I know he's going to. I'm just going to remember you. I know you remember yourself. I know he would probably remember that story because that was something that was real personal to him. But you know, One, he was did. there with his son, and then two, yeah. you know, he lost his whole phone. So, and, you and know. The irony in that, mm -hmm. he lost his phone. Mm -hmm. You took a picture with him and his son, and the phone, yeah. I, I didn't take a picture. The Park Service took a picture. But the phone, but it was our phone. The park service took a picture, and I think somebody shared it with me, and that's yeah, how I got it. And then, that's a mosquito. And, um, make so ironic, we lost that, we lost that, that phone. We lost the phone that had the picture on it, yeah. yeah. But, y'all, it was such a cool story, though. But that's my little story time for the day, because I ain't really had nothing else, but I thought that, that was a cool story. One, because I met someone that was so, you know, legendary in what he does, and someone who's still so relevant now, today. And that it was cool because me and my husband both are like huge Andre 3000 fans. And, you know, it's just that you know that, you know, even though they are entertainers and, you know, we see them in this big 
this big space and then this limelight and stuff like that. They're still the people. They are just regular people who want to walk around and enjoy time with their children and, you know, enjoy the space that they're in and, you know, just enjoy life. So I'm just glad I didn't fan out on them, you know, fan. I, I, I wanted to. I wanted to be like, but, you know, I didn't do that. I wanted to be respectful, of the, you know, of the time that he was spending with his child. And then I just wanted to be respectful, you know. And plus, I was at work. I wasn't going to go crazy, crazy. I didn't even ask him for a picture, y'all. That is so crazy. But, no, I was being, like I said, I was being cool about it. I was being cool. But I know that it's a wonderful memory for us. Wonderful memory for me. My my husband think it's a funny. He think it's funny sometimes. He want to tell the jokes about it. But it was really a cool time. So, like I said, my story wasn't really educational. But I just thought it was a real cool story to tell. You know, I didn't, you know, like I said, I just, the only thing I took away from it is that, you know, you know, entertain us a human too, and they're people too, and we gotta kind of treat them with respect when we, you know, when we run across them, when we meet them, when we're meeting them, and I think they respect that a whole lot. So that was my story time, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed that cool little story. I hope I didn't miss out nothing. I don't think I did. I want to thank Hubby for chiming in a little bit. He didn't get on the camera, but he did chime in a little bit. And uh, yeah, so we are gonna see y'all tonight. Uh, since you're gonna see this video today, you, we're gonna see y'all tonight. Tonight is our Friday Night Lives. And uh, come on over there and, 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 you know, sip and chat with us. We're going to have a good time over there, me and Life of Steph Vlogs. And, yeah, thank y'all for sitting through this. I appreciate y'all in all ways. I love you. Enjoy the rest of your, fr the rest of your Friday. And we're going to see you tonight on our live, okay? All right, take care, y'all. Bye-bye.